so we are ready to get underway with game number 13 in your bracket. Both of these teams have a game with a 1-0 record. It's the number one seed, Rismondo Specialty Tank Worth, playing the number nine seed, RM Metals Troop, TCP Easton. The two teams have the toss. RM won the toss and will be the home team. They have taken the field. They're wearing the gray jerseys over the navy pants with the light blue caps. Let me give you their defensive alignment as they've already taken. On the mound is TJ Thompson. Behind the plate is Nate Stacks. At first base is Kyle Yerkes. At second base, Matt Albert. Their middle infielder is Sam Lopez. The shortstop is Jake Mays. And the third baseman is Aaron Lindendorf. And in the outfield, it'll be Nick Robertson in left, Brian Zerko in center, and Chris Reiner in the right. And the first three hitters in the Rismondo lineup that they will face, Don DiDonatus, Greg Pennell, and B.J. Polk. And the umpires for tonight's winner's bracket matchup. At home plate for Michigan, Chuck Beckwell. At first base from Michigan, Joey Walzak. At second base from Arkansas, Jason Overlag. And at third base from Arkansas, Ken Hawk. And so, Don DiDonatus ready to step into the box. E.J. Thompson on the mound. Nate Stapps ready to receive it. And as the clock strikes 9.30, we are just about ready to play ball. Don DiDonatus for third. And Starts off the action. World Series MVP, a two-time World Series Gold Club winner, an eight-time All-World Team member. And he gets things started with Slides in with safely double. with so a double. So in second base. And now stepping into the box, the man who led all of Conference U-Triple-S-A in home runs and RBIs the last two years. It'll be number 14, the pride of Old Tree, Georgia, Greg Cannell. Greg Cannell now. As we'll see in the commercial that will come in between the break. He chooses worth because Chicks take the long ball, but they're not going to see a long ball there. Just a pop out for out number one. Here's B.J. Folk now. B.J. Fulk out of here in a hurry with a home run. B.J. Fulk blows one over the wall and right. He's now got four home runs in the World Series. He makes it a 2-0 lead for Rosmondo. And it's 2 to nothing. Rosmondo on top. Number four, the middle infielder from Woodland, California, Double B, Bryson Baker. Bryson Baker popped up. And that one 
fouled away. Well, that's a foul ball on the final strike. There's two outs. And now stepping into the box, the two-time World Series MVP. Number 19, the man on the mound from Kissimmee, Florida, Andy Purcell. Two outs and now it's Andy Purcell's turn. Andy Purcell will draw a walk. Gordon Glenny's with us here in the uh, booth. Glad to have him with us out of the great state of Michigan. Help him bring some refreshments and snacks. For number 12, the left fielder. Plays out of Kathleen, Georgia, and he is Brian Rainwater. Brian Rainwater now. Vince Bisu with two on. He'll have a single for a base hit. It'll score the third run of the ball game. And that's an RBI single for Vince Bisbee. He bangs it into right. That'll make it a 3-0 lead. Runners at first and second. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the center fielder. Bobby Hughes. Bobby Hughes with two on and two out. Bobby Hughes to the wall.
That's an RBI infield single for Howie Krause. Coming in to score the sixth run of the inning is Hughes. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the right fielder, number two, Jeremy Eisenhower. Good start if you're a Rosmondo fan. Six to nothing, Rosmondo. Popped up, caught. And that does it for the top of the first. We promised Chicks it the long ball. As we head to the break. That will retire the side, but not before Rosmondo picks up six. I choose Worth for championship performance. I choose Worth for unmatched durability. I choose Worth because chicks dig the long wall. Be the best, choose worth. The third baseman is Jimmy Salas. In the outfield, it's Ringwater in left. Hughes in center, and Jeremy Eisenhower in right. Brian Zirka will Mellis. start off the inning. He'll be their center fielder, number five, playing out of Kankakee, Illinois, Brian Zirkel. So Zirkel will walk to lead off the inning. There's nobody out. Kyle Yerkes now is your hitter. Circle. 
at 6 1, there's nobody out. It'll bring up the right fielder, number 33, from Baltimore, Maryland, Chris Breyer. Yes, 6 to 1 is our score. Chris Greiner popped up, and it's going to fall. And that one finds no man's land in left center field. Yerkes dashing around the score, so it's now 6-2. Credit Greiner with the RBI. There's nobody out. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the cleanup hitter, the middle infielder, number five from Fresno, California, Sam Lopez. So it's up to Sam Lopez. Sam Lopez popped it up. Ron Fields Ground ball the third base is going to be nice retired. And then Howie Browse, a nice play to scoop the short hop. That will retire Fields. There's two outs, a runner in third, and it's an opportunity for the left fielder, number 31 from Phoenix, Arizona, Dick Robertson. <coughs> Robertson flies out, inning over. First inning complete. Rismondo leads by four early on here on day three of the 2000. Oh, you figured it out? What do you mean it was messing up? Men's major. And Robertson with the fly ball left. Rainwater there. Oh, away. did he have a heart attack and die? 6 2 lead for the visitors, Rismondo. Yeah. In the bottom oh, half, my God. Arnett Bettles got two runs. They got those two runs on two hits. We'll head to the top of the second. And do up, it'll be the top of the Rosmondo lineup. It'll be even on this aisle the ball.
Steed Adonis with a hot smash up the middle, but well positioned and then making the great play is Sam Lopez. He stretches out to get it and pops up to throw it. And there's one away as it brings up the second baseman, Greg Cannell. <laughs> Greg Cannell. That's a nice little picture there on the front page of conferenceutriplesa.com. Post that one for you on our Facebook.com slash U-Triple-S-A slow pitch page. Greg Cannell will beat it out. Greg Cannell with the ground ball to deep short. Nice play by Jake May. Conference U-Triple-S-A.com, your home for the men's major. B.J. Falk now. So we're going to credit him with the infield single, and it's going to bring up the additional hitter, number 16, B.J. Paul. Yeah, so. First thing I did when I got down here was turn it off. When I got down here, it was one up. No. I just didn't want to throw my... I got down here and my cup was empty, so I didn't want to throw it away. Yeah. This is gone. Oh, no, nice. BJ Full. Hulk the double. He lumbers into second. And now the third, two on, one out. And now it'll be an opportunity for the middle infielder, the seventh time all world <laughs> team member, Bryce and Baker. What did he, what food did he play? Now here's Bryson Baker. Baker back at the wall. It's gone. And Bryson Baker with the bomb to left. For Bryson, that's his second home run in this World Series. That'll make it 9 to 2. And now it's home score in front of him. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the pitcher. Number 19, Andy Purcell. Andy Purcell fouled away. Purcell with a line drive base hit. He's been aboard in both trips. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the left fielder, number 12, Brian Ringwater. Rainwater off the wall. Griner will field it. And Rainwater 
Rose and runners are on second and third. Actually, excuse me, they're going to have the tenth run of the ball game score. I thought that they were going to hold, but it said Purcell will come in. That brings Bobby Hughes to the plate. Howie Krauss picking a, one of the all-time classic songs from The Hangover is his walk-up song. What do tigers dream of? Oh, the things to ponder. Cross grounds out to retire the side four for Rosmano in the second. And they lead at eight to two.
Matt Albert puts him in the stands and we had a couple of screeching girls down there. Obviously they're not playing in the uh, women's division here. Because there's a major for the uh, women's USSA slow pitch. Women's A is Gordon Glenn. He knows he's a man that uh, is all-knowing. Used to be one of our heads of fast pitch. Now the assistant general manager for the USSA Florida Pride. Just thinking it's weird not seeing Wallace out here. And that's ball one to Nate Stacks, the second hitter of the inning, Nate Stacks. Come on, I saw Bernie like leaning sideways. Can you hear me, Bernie? <laughs> Nate Stats. It's weird not seeing Wallace out here. Stats to the wall, and it's caught by Rainwater. Deep left field, but up to the task is Brian Rainwater. He robs the catcher from Davenport, Iowa, what looked like an extra base hit. So hang a star on that one. There's quickly two outs. And now stepping into the box, yeah, the shortstop. Number six, Jake. Mays. Jake Mays is retired. Damn. We head to the third, eight runs. Rosmondo in the lead. Eisenhower. The bugs flying all around here in this one. Under the lights at Champion Stadium. And Eisenhower deep and gone Good over both walls. Bye. Jeremy Eisenhower jumps on the offering and pounds it over the right field wall. Jeremy's second home run of this World Series. So the right fielder from Milwaukee, Kansas, gets things jump started in the third. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the third baseman, number 24 from Whittier, California, Jimmy Salas. Jimmy Salas now. Don Tidonatis, the third at the plate. Many call him Junior. Of course, for those of you that don't know, Don is the son of the current CEO and chairman of the board of USSA. Drafted by the Tigers out of college. Also the state director for baseball in the and state of Michigan. Ball, so two on, nobody out. Now 
that'll be an opportunity for the second baseman, number 14, Greg Cannell. Greg at fourth. Both the third and the senior. The drafted by the Tigers. Here's Greg Cannell. And man, you can hear from the crowd. Indeed, the chicks do dig the long ball. Man, that one was off the full sail sign, I think, if we could take another look. Got to put that one on online so we can see it. We're watching our preview monitor. Full sail to get a technical degree in television. One of the places you could choose to go if you decide not to go to a university and get the full-blown education. B.J. Folk. Bryson Baker. Caught over and left by Robertson. And a fly ball over and BJ Folk is going to scoot up to second. Robertson. Robertson, the strong throw to second, but the big guy, BJ Folk, running hard. He shows the hustle, just beats the tag, so he's in second. One away, and it'll bring up the pitcher, the two time MVP. Andy Purcell. Andy Vince Bisbee. Bisbee with a line drive base hit. And that's an RBI single for Vince Bisbee. Ringwater running hard all the way into score. It's now 17-2, still just one out. It brings up the center fielder, Bobby Hughes. It's 17-2. The winner of this game takes on team 454.
And that one just keeps carrying. Bobby Hughes. Out of here. Bobby Hughes, a two-run over on the left center field. This he scores in 19 front to of him. Two. Nine run inning. Still just one out. And now stepping into the box, the 11th hitter in the inning, the Hall of Famer, Howie Krause. Howie Krause, before he comes to the plate, they ponder what do Tigers dream of, and maybe they dream of uh, seeing home runs like that. He led the World Series in home runs back in 2000, and here over a decade later, he's still hitting them out like that. So it's 22, and now stepping into the box, the man who got the inning started, the left-handed hitting right fielder, Jeremy Eisenhower. Eisenhower back to the wall. And, a long fly and ball it's going to be caught. Field, but Farrar drifts back to camp under it. He retires by Eisenhower. Farrar. So there's two outs. And now stepping into the box, it'll be the third baseman, number 24, Jimmy. At number South. two. So the inning continues. I wonder we expect if a great softball, and it's gotten uh, pretty rough of late. The last two ones have been disappointing. I guess unless you're a fan of Rismondo or a fan of Laser Vision. Hidenatis. Here's Greg Cannell. Let's Greg see if he can hit it the off the full sail sign again. Yeah. 
This one racing the other way. Heads to the wall. Salas scores. DiDonatus to third. And that's an RBI double for Drake Pinnell. He makes it to the wall in right center field. Dominating the score is Salas. There's two on, there's two outs. Now a chance for B.J. Paul. B.J., three out of three in the ball game. 21 to two is our score. So walk to load the bags. Grayson Baker. To right, that's the inning. But some more production for Osmondo. They tack on 11, and it's 21 to two, our score. I'm Greg Connell. I play with Rosmondo Worth. I'm from Moultrie, Georgia. I played two years of Juco baseball at Darton College, and my junior and senior year I played at Valdosta State. When I'm at the plate with a Worth bat, I mean, you just, you've got a bigger sweet spot. There's more room for error. If you're not a great hitter, you know, the sweet spots are bigger. It's just a better all-around bat. When I look for a bat, I look for a more balanced bat, so I go more with the, the end weights in which the new bat is a half ounce and that's that's about the limit. I don't like the full ounce end loads. When you're at the plate, if you don't have the confidence in what you're swinging, then it's going to affect your performance. And you know, with work, you have the confidence that you're going to hit it hard every time.
21 to three, our score. Shannon Tipton wondering to the home plate umpires rotate every game. We got the man, the myth, the legend up here in the broadcast booth, Rick Robo, our uh, <laughs> umpire in chief, Robo as he's known, and uh, you got the answer for him as well. Yeah, we rotate. We don't have the same ones back there uh, two games in a row. So we try to rotate definitely every game. You'll see a different guy. Ferrari in with a double. 21 3, bottom of the third. Pretty crazy. Power show last game with uh, 17 in the first. Laser vision. Wow. Didn't see that coming over GTO. Well, the one thing I mentioned before the game, just because it uh, is ironic that I got a chance to talk to Coop because he's going to the Hall of Fame. Him and Dal Banks is who we interviewed prior for our, our Hall of Fame videos that we're putting together. And let me tell you, there's no love lost between him and GTL, so that was one that he wanted to win. <laughs> yeah, that's putting it mildly. You got that exactly right. Zirkle, Brian Zirkle, the batter. He scored the first run of the game for uh, Arnett Medals. Bobby Hughes snags it out there in center field. Circle with the fly ball in the center field, the long run for Bobby Hughes there to grab it. Now two outs, and stepping into the box, it'll be the new pitcher playing out of Post Field, Michigan, number three. One out. Kyle Yerkes, who's now pitching. 21-3. Winner of this game will take on Team 454. Tiny Taylor's Bunch, the uh, 2011 Men's A World Champions. Well, the funny thing, Robo, is this. You know, the crew here putting together the games had a little bit of a conundrum, but they've been helped out by the run rule earlier. They weren't sure that they were going to be able to play the next game with the Team 454 because it was going to be, might have been here till 4 in the morning. Well, they won't let us play past 2. So we wouldn't have been here till 4, but it would have created an issue for sure. So we have 2 down. But I've been saying, in other words, it would have been a, a, certainly a late night. Oh, it had been much later. Yes, if we could get this that game. run rule. Really helps speed things up a little bit. Oh, definitely. We can now do that it. we were in uh, favor of that. Yeah, we could get it done here again, you know. Then we start in plenty of time without pushing it. That's one of the things I've been on the phone with Neil Swarner, the tournament director for all the other events, trying to secure extra time at the facility. This ball's hit pretty deep. As Hughes goes back to the wall. That's, wow. Griner off center field, halfway up. What a shot that was. That's two more runs. Sam Lopez. Fields. <laughs> he gets it deep. We're trying to figure out what the exact score is here, Bernie. I'm pretty sure that we have it right on our board, which has it at 21 to 4. Well, uh, Granite hit that home run, so I'm thinking it could be more than that. Anyway, Rosmondo has 21 to 
four to five. Twenty-one to five. Excuse me, they just told us. Did they? Twenty-one to five. So, as I said, next game here will be Team 454 taking on the winner. We want to get into Saturday. Phone call with Stafford Connor checking on some things. He's U-Triple-S-A today, the best magazine on the market. Keep up with all the sports in U-Triple-S-A. Great pictures, camera work, and articles. Of course, conference u You can get the uh, articles online immediately. There's nothing like thumbing through one of the best magazines in the land, Bernie. I like looking at the pictures. No, it does a great job. Oh, fabulous. Heck, even Paul O'Leary made a cameo in this last edition of the Paul conference. Paul O'Leary. Say, today. Rubbish, I say. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Andy Purcell to lead off. Top of the fourth inning. Our official 21 to 5. There is kind of messed up, Matt. I believe it's the top of the fourth. There you are, Paul. That's deep. Is that going to get enough? Doesn't look like it in left field. MVP and defensive MVP at the Men's Major World Series. That's a shot down the right field line. He'll go easily into second. Vince Bisbee, the batter. Here's Vince Bisbee. Chuck Doc Beckwell behind the plate, down at first. Tony Walzak out at second. Proud of Arkansas, Jason Oberlag over at third, Mr. Ken Hawk. Bisbee's going to walk and move and to first. And we have runners at first and second. It's always a very patient One out. Center fielder, Mr. Bobby Hughes, number seven. Seven-time All-World here at the Men's Major World Series. That's Stafford Connor. He must be hearing all your publicity that you're talking about. His magazine on the air right now. goes Bobby Hughes down to first. So Hughes at first, Bisbee at second, Rainwater over to third. One at every station here in the top half of the fourth inning, 21-5 in favor of Rosmondo over RM Meadows. And Howie Krause, long time loyal 
player for Travis Rosmondo and all the teams that he's had over the years. Hall of Famer. He's inducted into the USSA National Hall of Fame. And Howie puts a charge into this one. And that one's up and gone off the flags in left field. Grand slam for Howie Krause. And that one is way, way back in left field. Halfway up the champion flag. Did you hear the song that he plays beforehand, Robo? No, I did not. We've talked about it a couple times already, but it starts out, what would Tigers dream of if they would take a Tiger nap? They might dream of a home run like that. That would be a sweet dream. <laughs> Woo, what a charge that was. Here we go, Jeremy Eisenhower. 25-5. Call him Izzy. He cranks one out into right center. That's in there. And that's a double the right center field for Jeremy Eisenhower. And no stepping to the plate for his first step back in the ball game. It'll be the new third baseman for Brown Plate, Illinois, Mike Rines. Pinch hitter Mike Rines. He'll come in and play third base for Jimmy Salas. So Mike Ryan's the batter, still one away, top half to fourth. He drives one into right center for a single. And Ryan's with an RBI single. Here comes Eisenhower across the plate. Eisenhower scoops around the score. It'll make it 26 5, still one out. Now we go to the top of the Now order. back to the top of the lineup. Don Dinanatis, the third. Step to the plate, and one away. One runner on, top half the fourth. Inside, ball one. Inside again. York is working him. And he'll draw a walk. There's two on and one out. Greg Cannell, two time. Home run champion of Conference U Triple S A back to back years. He's going to take a swing and it's not. That's carrying that ball up against the wall right in front of the 385 foot sign. Rhines. Rhines and Dina Nottis advance. Runners at second and third. Right over that fence is Matt O'Hare's vehicle. Right There's the a $50 uh, reward. Got a bounty on Matt's one. car. BJ has an excellent chance of <laughs> binging it right there. Bing, bing, bing. Winner, winner. Chicken, Chicken dinner. dinner. <laughs> $50 to team. Two in scoring position. Oh, 26 fast. to 5. Crowd getting on the umpire. Put him on. You might have a point there. B.J. Folk was well outside of the batter's box. Well, put the clock on in five seconds. 
When you start but can he throw when he's that far out? He's basically in the Rosmondo dugout. Well, you throw it, there's going to be a strike. He was upset over the fact that he called it a ball. Then you want to, you, you know, how these guys always do. But you, once you get the ball back from the catcher, you only have five seconds to deliver. Kind of a mute point in a 21 run ball game. Really? I mean, Yerkes, the pitcher outside. So Bryson hits one deep. That's another grand slam. Grand slam home run. It's 30 to 5. Second grand slam of the inning. BJ Folk, Billy Jack puts it out of here. Here we are in the booth. And we got Rachel Goosens trying to say hello to Mother Goose, our great crew here in the booth watching the ball game, including Rick Robertson. <laughs> Glad to have you with us here. And our view from up high. And we've seen a nine run fourth inning. Andy Purcell. Ball one. She might be one of the most undervalued people in U-Triple-S-A as far as the organization's concerned. Not many people know the work that Rachel and Victoria do behind the scenes, but they're a couple of the people that are helping post the articles and the pictures on conferenceutriplesa.com. Wonderful job, those girls. Yeah, Every day they're at the office working. Oh, steps to the plate. Brian Rainwater, nine runs in, 30 for Rosmondo, five for r and Meadows. Here's Brian Rainwater. He drills it into right field. Two you know, Rachel's not up here uh, to see these singles. She likes to see the long ball. And she saw, did you see the home run earlier that was off the full sail sign? The off of the what sign? There's the flags out there. The full sail? Yeah, the full sail is no, the I didn't red see that one, one in the first row. And Greg Cannell hit the long ball off the full sail sign. I'm serious. This is a true story. That's pretty amazing. That's a bit, that's a, that's a long one. Here's Vince Bisbee. I think everybody in the stadium likes to see the long ball, though. And they'll get a chance to see a couple of them tomorrow night in the home run derby. Bisbee. Flies out to right field there. Retired aside, top half to fourth, Rosmondo. Nine runs, thanks to score 30 for Rosmondo. Five for r and medals. They've got the score to keep the game moving. They're going to have to pick up six runs. Minimum of six. As we go into the bottom of the fourth Men's Major World Series 40th Annual at ESPN Wide World of Sports. We'll, Live. we'll be back after this word from Worth. I choose Worth for championship performance. I choose Worth for unmatched durability. I choose Worth because chicks dig the long wall. Be the best, choose Worth.
Nate Robertson. Robertson will draw a walk. Matt Albert. He's going to make it 30 to 6. That's an RBI double to left center field for Matt Albert. Out number one. It's Team 454 on the field Bill next. Locked. Andy Purcell there to gather. There's one away. Oh, now, reminder. Stafford box. Connor just Dave called Bay. in to remind us about big tournament coming up in Vegas at the end of October held by Greg Hutchinson, who's one of the top directors in our organization. And what a great time it is. To head to Vegas and play at Big Vegas League Dreams end of October. It's a 30 to 7 game. One out, one on. So now it'll be an opportunity for the third baseman from Cedar Falls, Iowa, here at LoneStarSoftball.com, the site where you can get signed up for that one. Triple S A Lone Star Shootout Worlds, featuring all turf infields, October 29th and 30th. Aaron Middendorf. With his second home run of the ball game, this time it's a two-run shot. That'll make it a 30-9 game. One out, and stepping into the box, Brian Farrar. Mother Goose, we said hello to you on the broadcast. And Rachel's father also watching the broadcast as well. We don't want him to feel left out or jealous at home. Well, the home run derby was supposed to be tonight. Another USSA Facebook.com slow pitch question. We started last night. We were wondering who will win the 2011 Home run derby. And that's a base on balls for Brian Farrar. Here's a walk. So now step into the play, it'll be the top of the order. The center fielder, number five, in the Illinois, Brian Circle. Brian Zirkel. So who will win the 2011 uh, Home Run Derby? We'll take your answers on Facebook.com slash U-Triple-S-A Slow Pitch.
down second and third with one away. David on our Facebook.com slash future plus a slow pitch page going with the beast Greg Canal. Charles going with Tim McCoco for the three peat and Ralph Jara going with Brett Helmer. Chris Greiner now is your batter. Sends this one into the Braves bullpen. Team 454 will take the winner of this game on next. And that's a foul ball on the final strike, so now two outs, the base is still clear. And in the box, the middle infielder, number five, Sam Lopez. Michael Mohawk shared a nice little picture. On our Facebook page. We move to the flip-flop rule now. We mentioned him, Michael Tavares, first tournament win as a small team from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Showcasing his trophy online. That's a nice looking trophy that they had up there. And we're glad that you shared your photo with us online on our slow pitch page. So be sure to so on field Share what you get, especially down here at the men's major if you're watching around. Second, Here's Farmington uh, hit squad softball saying Cannell is going to hit the long ball more than anybody else. Flip flop rule in effect because RM is the home team, so therefore Resmada would have. They, at this point, because the lead is more than 15, which is the run rule, r and will have the ability to get three outs to produce at least those three runs to send us to the bottom of the fifth, and then Rosmonda will know what they need to do to get their 15 runs if needed. Just uh, another way to speed up the game. Sometimes in Major League Baseball, they might use a flip-flop rule when things can get out of hand. I guess there's no run rules in that little game now. Second base is Ronnie Fields, and stepping into the box is Matt Albert. David wants to know, is the Home Run Derby going to be shown live on UUSALive.com? And the answer is absolutely, without question. 
We will be here tomorrow night after the winner's final. And we'll get to see plenty of long ball action. Plenty of people rooting on Greg Cannell. And there's a high pop of the shallow left field. Drifting back is the Donatus. He pulls it in for the second. Shane Rose out. goes with Larson or Philby. In second is Fields, and now into the box. The catcher, number two, from Davenport, Iowa, a Stacks. Charles Hunter, where Jeff Hall is, he was uh, touring with the Long Haul Bombers, but didn't play in the conference this year, just doing the tour. This should do it, and it does. Team 454 is on the stadium in our fourth and final game of the night. Rosmondo wins 30 to 12. Stay with us. Our coverage of the 2011 men's major will continue on U-Triple-S-A-Live.com. Rosmondo 30, r medal 12. So we've got our fourth ticket to the final four punch. It's punched by the number one seed, Rosmondo. They'll stay right here on the stadium field. And they'll be coming your way in a few minutes, facing off against the number four seed, Team 454. Once again, Rosmondo will stay right here. They'll play the nightcap against Team 454. For r and medals, they are now one and one in this tournament. They will drop into the loser's bracket. Their next game scheduled for 9.30 tomorrow morning. They'll play at 9.30 tomorrow morning against Dorflinger. That game scheduled for here in the stadium at 9.30.